Hello Hannah, welcome to another video car show. Hi Ian. I thought it would be good this week to touch on the topic of embracing Dark Knight of the soul and, um, and also go into the understanding of the lower energetic frequencies. Yeah, that sounds great. I think this subject matter is something that would be extremely useful to look at right now considering um, perhaps the time of year and what we're all facing right now. I think first of all maybe when we talk about the Dark Knight of the soul it's important to maybe explain that in some terms that people may, might understand better of what we mean by that. I would say that a dark night of the soul is often a time band where we, it's either been triggered um, by say for example an external event, we might have lost someone that we love, we might be going through a relationship breakup, we might be going through extreme financial difficulty, we might be um, incredibly miserable in our job. Um, there might be many external challenges that we may face, but sometimes saying that a dark night of the soul or this particular, I guess, black period or a pause, we might see it as a pause in our life, can actually come from not really any external um, cause. It can just, if you like, sometimes float over us and before we know it, we're in a, a kind of different frame of mind in terms of relating to the world. The reason why it's important to look at this right now is because I find that many light workers are actually suffering or going through many initiations and challenges in a short period of time which is what we've looked at before in terms of um, the linear time running short and so that these things are coming through a lot quicker for us these challenges and I suppose a dark night of the soul what we'd see is that maybe all of a sudden if this hasn't happened with something external um, we might start to feel slightly more isolated than usual we might we might um, feel more alienated or not as able to relate to people around us we might start to feel out of touch um, with things around us sometimes what's actually happening is that we're experiencing a healing on many levels of our subtle bodies um, that we can't actually see but they're elements of our aura or vibration changing and they're actually dying off so when we look at the ego or the parts of the mind, when we, um, every time we have a new enlightenment on the road to ascension, every time we, we learn something new about ourselves, if you like there's a small death or every time we have any type of healing, it might be very small so that we don't notice it, but in terms of a dark night of the soul, there are major parts of our psyche, of our energy field and different subtle bodies that are probably actually leaving our energetic field and our, our whole being. Um, so that's why sometimes this um, period is likened to to a death in fact the actual awakening process that we see in terms of um, spiritual awakening is likened to a death the breakdown sometimes because there's such large parts of us changing and altering these periods actually can sometimes um, we look at them psychologi psychologically as, as depression um, or other kinds of mental illnesses but i always think first of all it's important to look at them in terms of what's going on in the life or in terms of what's happening spiritually I think it's very easy to, to sum something up in terms of depression but what we'd like to do is to be able to see is this dark night of the soul helping us to move forward in a more positive light um, is it helping us to have a stop so that we review things and we change our current life path to move more into alignment we're not saying that these times are easy, in fact they can be incredibly difficult, so difficult that um, they seem to take us right to the edge, they can take us to the edge of um, with such emotional difficulties, such mental difficulties and especially when we look at those um, who are massively spiritual aware, there might be many times where our realities might seem to be less um, solid so we might find that we're completely out of touch and not really aware that we're operating on the third dimension we might feel fogginess in the head and all sorts of um, things going on for us um, they are quite scary times but they're times where there is gold in those places that we can sift for um, meaning that we can bring things forward from the unconscious and review ourselves and and change for the better or change Yes, did you want to say something? Well, basically, so it's not a case of just um, suppressing the shadow side or things that we deem as negative. Sometimes it's useful to bring them to the surface and actually work through them. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. And right now, that takes me on to the, the next part I was going to talk about. But right now, I think what I'm seeing in some light workers or some people um, that are engrossed in spiritual work, a tendency to become slightly rigid in what we'd call the persona of the love and light 
um, persona. And there's nothing um, wrong in, in positivity, in, um, in tools of um, unconditional love. This is something that we all learn on the path. But I think that sometimes, and myself, I've had to work through um, the fact that sometimes we use positivity in place of doing deeper healing work. So there's nothing wrong with um, always, obviously, using this observing of the self and seeing the positive outcome in many things. But if we jump in with the positivity too quickly, it stop for, stops us from fully experiencing the, um, the depth and the feeling. And we need to go into those darker feelings. We don't need to get so engrossed in them so that they drag us right under. But what we do need to do is we need to feel them because we can't continue fully along our ascension and learn and bring those elements of the shadow forward to integrate into ourselves without going there. So, yes, you're right. It does mean that we need to experience those, those feelings in us. Um, yeah. and look at them so with the persona is there a danger that we can be too love and light and then just become um, in apathy and end up being paralysed and being one persona or we can be the other end of the spectrum where we're too kind of uh, in the conspiracy and everything's dark And yeah I think so I think obviously like like we will find in a lot of things balance is the key uh, we're, we're moving into this or we're in the age of Aquarius where obviously combines the whole it looks at the whole the bigger picture and when we move from polarity now, when we're moving from, considering we're in this interim at the moment, I must say, with um, more intense light and dark that we can see. Um, but as we move through this period, we're, we're needing to find the balance between that. So, yes, it's it's perfectly correct that we find unconditional love and the positivity and the, the ability to always observe and see the good in the fact that we chose the family we had, even if there were difficulties, the fact that we might a relationship might be coming to the end, but, you know, we can see that it's meant to be that way but we also need to grieve for those things we need to do the work in order to let them go and make sure that we're not stuffing down our feelings and emotions which I find that um, sometimes as light workers we like to move through this ascension process in a bubble and what I mean by that is we're trying to be non-committing to going through this in terms of humanness but with my understanding, I feel that we need to actually feel all there is to feel because we came into these bodies and we took this decreasing or descending into um, third dimension from a lot of, uh, you know, a fifth dimension perhaps or a higher dimension to fully experience all the capacities of being human. So on the way back up, we need to do that also because we need to go with our bodies and all our subtle fields. Yeah. I think we'll just to expand on that, I know that you're talking about our persona and, and our, our thoughts coming into our minds, mm -hmm. but how do we know that the dark side of the soul is not other negative lower beings coming in to try and move us off our pathway? Yeah, that one is an interesting one, and I, I don't think um, a succinct answer can, can come forward with that fully. In my experience, I think it's about... I think the slight subtle differences, that's what I would say. I think that if it's a dark night of the soul, we might be experiencing um, um, difficulties, down feelings, you know, sadness or um, confusion. But then occasionally we may come into conjunction with things that feel like they're not, they're not actually our thoughts. Um, there's something else going on. And it's, it's a really hard one to almost discuss or pinpoint because this takes me into the territory really when, when we start to look at things called psychosis as well. Now, I don't believe that every person out there that's labelled with psychosis um, has what we would call... It's a label, so there becomes difficulty. But what I mean is people that we say hear voices or people that might, might be saying, for example, that I've actually come across... Um, that they were aware that there were different dark forces or people that um, were aware of what they were saying or different incidences that were triggered by very big events like, say, for example, um, the, um, the Twin Towers event um, with the 9-11. There's people that I've met that actually went into a, um, a space inside themselves and actually got told they were psychotic. But for me, I feel that it was just a cracking and things going on and awareness but it's hard for us to tell, but all I would say is personally, I've experienced things that I don't feel were just a dark night of the soul. I would say that they were um, outside forces, perhaps aiming or trying to manipulate my decisions that I make, let's put it that way. So um, I think sometimes these things can be shocking. They often come over us very quickly. They, the thoughts that we may have, for example, are destructive. They may be about destroying ourselves 
or they might be about, um, in some cases, they could be about destroying others. Um, I would say that a lot of us don't experience that, but there may be some people in society right now that can be triggered via certain controlling mechanisms out there um, to do certain things. I feel that these things are often extremely out of character and that our thoughts tend to shock us if they come forward with something and we think, oh my God, where did that come from? Often when we do a lot of spiritual work, if we start to look into the less light shades of truth seeking, we basically need to be aware that as we're looking into these things, we need to surround ourselves with light, but also there might be more things there to try and stop us from moving forward with our life purpose. And I think that for light workers that have an incredibly important life purpose in terms of getting information out there about allowing people to call back their freedom, 